Hey guys, welcome back to today's video. Today is Sunday, October 31st, 2021. Happy Halloween. And today we're going to be talking about the early vote in the state of Virginia. Now, the state of Virginia officially closes all of their early voting today. So you can get out and vote if you live in the state and you make it in time before your polling uh, station closes. Of course, if you want to wait, you can vote on Tuesday on Election Day as 67% of Virginia voters have responded in polls on a pretty consistent measure saying that they would vote in person about a third of the state has already cast their ballot or plans to do so today. So all around, we shouldn't be expecting the majority of the vote to be early voting. And if it was to be, I think the election would be said and done, considering what we know today and what we will explore in terms of the early vote. But I want to discuss what the early vote actually tells us about this Virginia gubernatorial race. As you might know, the early vote typically over compensates for the Democratic Party, primarily because Democrats tend to vote earlier. A lot of the times they are voting by mail and with the Republican big lie that has been spread by President Donald Trump about the presidential election being rigged. There is no entertainment for that idea on this channel. Looking at it, many voters might not necessarily be inclined, at least on the Republican side, to vote by mail if Donald Trump is telling them that it's a rigged system. So a lot of Republicans, I expect to wait to come out in full force on Election Day. And that makes sense. You know, when you're taking a look at everything that has been said and done, you can certainly expect the turnout on Election Day to benefit solely the Republican Party and make up the margin as set out by the early vote. Now, we're going to be exploring the models that are given to us by Target Early and Target Smart. The reason why we can't really get a good understanding about the early vote in Virginia is because they do not allow people to identify with a political party. So since you do not have political affiliation, it becomes increasingly more difficult to figure out who is actually voting. But there have become different ways to model the amount of people voting on both sides, usually from the Northern Virginia area. You can expect many of those voters to be Democratic and also can compare it to years past. In the 2020 presidential election, there were released results about the early vote in the state. Let's see if we can find it here. Uh, so this is specifically the presidential results, but specifically in Virginia, we can see the absentee votes for presidential candidates. The margin here was 871,000 over Donald Trump, which meant that Joe Biden had a lead of nearly a million votes over Donald Trump by the time we reached Election Day with 2.8 million votes cast altogether in the early vote. Then when it came down for the presidential vote, including Election Day vote, 4.4 million people turned out to vote in the state of Virginia, and that margin was effectively cut in half, with Joe Biden only winning the state by 451,000. Had he won by the original set out numbers as shown in the absentee ballot, you would have seen Joe Biden win the state of Virginia with 65% of the vote. So you can certainly see how the election day vote benefits the Republican Party and how the early vote benefits the Democratic Party. And that seems to have been the case for the past few election cycles. Target Early has been tracking these numbers over the past couple of elections, 2017, 2019, 2020, and also 2021. They are currently tracking the early slash absentee vote report that we see from Virginia. But again, this is not a perfect science. This is based off of their own modeling, and we will be trusting it enough to just do a little bit of an analysis as to what this actually means. But as you might be able to tell from the headline from the Washington Post, early voting is now surging in both parties. Because Glenn Youngkin is not trying to embody President Trump and is really pushing him away at every single step that he can get, besides those where he's directly asked about the president, of course, he does need to answer those questions in a beneficial way for these Trump voters. I will say Glenn Youngkin has ran an exceptional campaign when it comes down to the way he's balanced being a moderate Republican and a Trump Republican. And if Republicans can embody the way that Glenn Youngkin has uh, approached such an issue, approached such a weird point in the Republican Party, they will win many, many more elections just simply by modeling what Glenn Youngkin has done correctly in the state of Virginia. So with this surge in both parties, a lot of this is less about the mail-in vote surging for the Republican Party and more about the early in-person vote. People can go in person to vote early and that would be considered to be absentee slash early. We typically group them together. But there seems to be a very big disconnect between what that actually means. And I just want to say that when you vote early, it doesn't necessarily mean vote by mail, even though there seems to be a lot of discussion about that being a grouped in there. Because when you look at the early vote, you're talking about both of those being counted together. But since we are going to be looking at Target early, I want to show you the differences between 2021 and 2017. Um, another reason why you might see some bigger discrepancies between the Democrats and the Republicans when it comes down to the early vote now versus earlier on, again, a lot more distrust in our early slash absentee vote tally. So you will start to see more Republicans turn out on election day and less Democrats turn out on election day as well. But you can compare it to years past. 
In 2017, it seemed as if the Democrat and Republican early vote, based off of the modeled results here, first of all, it was not a lot of votes. And the total number of votes cast in the 2017 governor election, you hit nearly 2 million. Uh, sorry, hit nearly 3 million. Well, based off of this, there were only about 189,000 votes tallied in the early vote. Now, that sort of makes sense. I do think that, uh, you know, when you're taking it all into consideration about how many people uh, would be voting by mail and how many people would be voting early in person. It really just depends on the election cycle. But in most elections prior to 2020, the overwhelming majority of a singular state would vote in person. There are a few exceptions, I think Oregon being one of them, and a couple of other states where they actually send out mail-in ballots even before COVID-19. So they make it a little bit um, more uh, easier for those certain states to end up voting by mail and voting early. But for the rest of the states, the rest of the swing states, including Virginia, the overwhelming majority of people voted in person. And since there was less distrust here, that's why you start to see the Republican Party do a little bit better than they are today. Uh, that is something that you have to take into account. People do not trust this early voting system, this absentee mail-in ballot system, as much as they did in the past, even four years ago. So this disconnect here doesn't necessarily spell out the best news for the Democratic Party. Doesn't mean, oh, wow, they already have such an advantage, which makes it impossible for the Republican Party to win. If this was to be a normal election and all else was equal over the past four years and the type of turnout was the same and the type of response on election day was the same, sure, you might be able to say, oh, Democrats even outperformed their 2017 pace. Oh, they outperformed their 2019 pace, their 2020 pace even. Doesn't that mean they will do better than they did in all three elections? The answer is probably not, looking at a lot of the numbers that we have today. But there is still something to explore here, because based off of the Target Smart model, it says that Democrats have an advantage of 222,000 more votes than Republicans do. And they get this, I think, through their modeling system. I don't know the exact part of it, but I do know that the way that we have seen estimates formed is based off of those who voted in the Democratic primary who went on to the general election to vote early. And I think that data might be released somewhere where you can take a look at the crossover and the Democrats have an advantage over the Republican Party by an advantage of about two to one. For reference, back in 2020, that advantage was three to one in the early vote. But then again, about 40% of Virginia voted in person on election day versus now it looks like 67% of the state is expected to vote in person. But with this 222,000 vote advantage supposedly by target early, what does that tell us about 2021? Well, we know, based off of the 2020 election results, that this is a big decrease. The 2020 election advantage for the Democratic Party was 871,000 votes. Today, that number is 222,000. Now, don't read too deep into the overall numbers. Just understand that Joe Biden had a larger lead. You can see here that the lead is over 30 points. Well, for Terry McAuliffe over Glenn Youngkin, it looks like that other lead may be around 16 to 17 points. So it looks like the lead was actually doubled for Joe Biden, but the raw vote total should always be higher because 2020 was a much higher year in terms of overall turnout. But when you take a look at the final result, you will see here that the margin narrowed down by about 400,000 votes by the election day vote. So if Republicans can replicate that, have Trump level turnout, or at least 2020 level turnout, it wasn't really after anything to do with President Trump when it comes down to, or obviously it did, but it doesn't have to do with the fact solely just Donald Trump in terms of the, the turnout in 2020. You can see here that the margin was cut down by 400,000 votes. So if Republicans replicate that, they could certainly overcome this advantage of just 222,000 votes as outlined. In 2017, you can see here that the margin was 234,000 between Ralph Northam and Ed Gillespie. That translated to roughly a nine-point margin of victory across the state. So when Democrats look at this as an example, they say, okay, they can win with 222,000 and technically win by seven, eight points statewide, but that's assuming that it consistently holds across the margin. I think that this only is a good sign for Democrats telling them that they have room to fall when it comes down to this 2021 race. When they take a look at the expected turnout on the Republican side, they can certainly see that it is going to eventually decrease. Their margin is going to narrow up and the Democratic Party will be in a less fortunate position than they are today. I think that the Democrats should be cautious about what they see right now because this early vote number doesn't exactly correlate with what we see when it comes down to the polling data. Even Fox News, for instance, we can go ahead and take a look at their individual poll and see if they have released the cross tabs for it. I hope they have. Um, they should have been able to release them. I've seen them before. Um, not entirely sure, though, if we will be able to pull them up just straight off of this link. Um, maybe they will release it right at the end. I'm not sure if they will. Uh, click here to read the to read the full poll results. So if they actually see if you have already voted, they have that question up asking people, um, if you have already voted, who did you already vote for? And you can see here that um, amongst likely voters, 
those who have voted already let's see when you cast your ballot um, I'm trying to find the exact question here uh, just to make sure if uh, people will be able to see that uh, but as we scroll looking forward through it I think that um, already voted if already voted how did you vote and let's see if they asked the question I guess not um, maybe they they will have it um, but the point being that if we actually find it by the end of this I will link in it at the end where they discuss the uh, vote difference between Terry McAuliffe and Glenn Youngkin I might have seen it there and one of you guys might have seen it but I certainly did not uh, but the, the margin there wasn't as large as this uh, target early seems to be suggesting and I think that while it is going to match the expectation of what we know I think that there certainly might be some type of discrepancy here between the target early model and the target smart model versus what the polling data is actually telling us and you know all around I think that the numbers are narrowing up for a reason you cannot deny the fact that the race has gotten significantly closer than where it is today but that early vote number might not necessarily be telling us the entire story i think there is much more to dive into than simply just understanding the democrats have an advantage because we don't have early voting uh with that party registration tied onto it this is all just estimates based off of respective turnout and based off of who voted in earlier elections versus later ones because again people may have voted in a certain primary that they otherwise did not necessarily agree with in addition to that, I think that there might have been also earlier and higher turnout among certain primaries than other ones because actually the Republican nomination process moved to a convention system. So it would become increasingly more difficult to get an understanding about how voters would have voted in this state. All around here, I think that a lot of it is just speculation combined with a little bit of math thrown into it, which means that the numbers aren't going to be perfectly accurate, but they can get us a closer idea as to what to expect in the state of Virginia. But based off of the narrowing numbers, I'm not so sure that this early vote tracker from Target Smart and Target Early is going to be 100% accurate. In addition to that, there is something to be said that if this many, these many voters had voted early, uh, you know, the Democratic Party would benefit simply because Youngkin is beginning to gain momentum. You see, when people vote early, that means that their decision is locked in earlier on in the race. If someone's voting on October 14th, something that comes out the day before the election wouldn't impact their vote because they have already voted. Now, some states have laws where you can take back your early vote or you can vote again in person uh, just by canceling out, calling your secretary of state, something of that nature. Uh, but, you know, looking at the state of Virginia, Virginia, if you're just a standard swing voter and you already cast your ballot for one candidate over the other, you probably aren't going to go through the trouble of trying to change your ballot for uh, an election that you've already voted in. You know, a lot of the times people have that mentality where, oh, it's just my vote. And that mentality adds up to thousands, sometimes tens of thousands of voters that either do not vote or let their vote go out uh, without either changing it. Or, you know, in some cases, if someone gets a ballot back and it says, you know, you need to fix your ballot in order for it to be counted, you need to verify your signature. We need to make sure that this was you. As we actually saw in the state of Georgia, it's called curing a ballot. Uh, your ballot was sent back because it doesn't seem like you were the one who actually filled it out. And then you verify, yes, it was actually me who filled it out. A lot of the times people ignore those requests primarily because they do not think they have that much of an impact on an overall race. And I think in many cases that might be true when it comes down to here. So this last minute momentum for Glenn Youngkin certainly will benefit him. I think that he will go into election day with a lot of people riled up, fired up, ready to go in the state of Virginia on his side. But also that early vote that already happened, happened at the time period in which Glenn Youngkin wasn't above Terry McAuliffe. This recent surge in popularity quite literally happens days before the election. And while you may see this as something that is similar to what happened for Donald Trump in the 2016 election, or something similar to what happened for other Republicans day, days before the election, we have not seen this level of early voting in an off year before 2021. Typically speaking, most people voted on election day, which meant that every single day of the campaign counted. But considering that roughly a third of the state is expected to vote by mail or vote early means that as of today, all of the votes will be finalized early, which means that this last minute momentum won't be helping for the votes that already have been counted, which is why you might be seeing Democrats up so high, simply because they were able to get out their votes earlier, and thus people won't be able to walk back on such a decision two weeks later that they already made. You know, thinking about it in the full perspective here, Early vote also benefits the Democratic Party because it gives the Republican Party less time to campaign. If there are on-the-fence voters that just wanted to get it out of the way or they knew they would be out of state, they had something come up, and they vote early, in many cases, I think they were leaning towards Terry McAuliffe earlier on in the race. Of course, there is an improvement here for the GOP regardless. Joe Biden won the state by 10.1%. Terry McAuliffe for a long period of time was only leading in the polling data by at most 4% and then narrowing down to two, three points. And then and all of a sudden, in the last stretch, the final week of the campaign, it went into Youngkin being in the advantage. 
Of course, this will help him, but I think that there are some things that you cannot prevent simply due to the fact that Democrats can really turn out their voters in full force earlier on, which gives people less time to contemplate and think about their decision before Election Day. So with this advantage for the Democratic Party, I think in many ways it does replicate what we have seen in the past when it comes down to Democrats taking the advantage over the Republicans in the early vote. Many things can change. And also, this lead is not large enough that Republicans cannot change it. You know, the Republican Party made up 400,000 votes by the time the 2020 election ballots were finalized in the state of Virginia. 400,000. And based off this target early model, the lead is only 222,000. While in an off year you can expect turnout to decrease, it is entirely possible that this race narrows up significantly and that Democrats start to see Republicans overtake such a large margin that they have expanded off of this early vote according to Target Smart and Target Early. They're one and the same. But I do think that, you know, looking at these numbers, if I was a Democrat here, looking at it from a perspective of someone from the McAuliffe campaign, I would be okay with the numbers. I would say this is a good lead, but it also means that it is entirely possible that the Republican overtakes it and that it doesn't shore up anything for either political party. So thank you guys so much for watching this video. Make sure to comment down suggestions below. Subscribe on the left if you haven't already and check out the Instagram and Twitter. At the bottom left of the screen, there's also a Discord server for you to go ahead and join. On the screen is a video you can watch and then a playlist for my 2021 election analysis videos. Again, thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you all later today.